What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one, I wanted to get into a few different topics over the game, such as the vice president of Bethesda Softworks camp getting nuked by some players that pretty much trolled him. Also wanted to get into Vault 94's raid. As we know, it has been available on PC for quite some time, but it is now available on console as well. And it has came with a lot of complications, but not specifically just on console. It just does seem a little bit worse on there, sadly. Also, I wanted to touch base over some of the rewards in the Vault Raid too. So starting off with Bethesda's Vice President Pete Hines' camp being nuked, as you can see here, there was a whole article posted about it over on Reddit. We just protected a level 47 private Pete Hines through the mire and died while nuking his base. Pete, you're an amazing sport. This was honestly revitalizing and wonderfully fun for us tonight. Called that he was online and we joined just to see if we could and voila. So we found his base on the map and eventually found him at Valley Galleria. And one of our teammates found him inside getting mauled by Scorched and revived him. So we just casually started following him around through the mire, letting him get his XP. And it was stated that there was like six of them following him around. That's a pretty big distraction. All the while, their buddy Alpine was secretly launching a nuke on his base. Thanks, Pete, for letting us tag along. Sorry about your base. Photos and videos here. So, yeah, actually, Pete ended up responding to this Reddit post. But let's just go ahead and take a look first at these photos and videos here. I'll have a link down below in the description, by the way, to this Reddit post if you want to further investigate this. But I'm going to be pretty much covering everything here in this video. But anyways, as you can see, this is Pete Hines camp in a nuke zone. And yes, this is for sure Pete Hines camp because for one, he did respond to them on the Reddit post with his actual Reddit account. And for two, if you just go to his Twitter, as you can see, it's the same thing as his tag online. So yeah, pretty freaking funny. And once again, this is the vice president of Bethesda Softworks. As you can see here, it is mentioned in the Fallout Wiki. Pete Hines is the Vice President of Bethesda Softworks and is in charge of public relations and marketing of games published by Bethesda, including Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. I know the Wiki isn't the best source for information, but trust me, he is the Vice President of Bethesda Softworks, which just makes this even more hilarious that this happened. I know, sounds kind of mean, but it's kind of funny too at the same time. But anyways, back to the topic. Now here, we got the nuke actually dropping right on top of his camp. Check this out. Voila! Kaboom! I have no idea where those sound effects came from. I'm just going with it, okay? It's not that important. And then we have the after effects right here of the players just chilling at his camp. And this is a little bit of footage of the players actually following him around in Valley Galleria helping him out. Anyways, he, as you can see, responded to this guy that says Pete kind of sucks at camp building. And his response was, hey, I like my simple little base. And I went out of my way to make it visitor friendly. So yeah. And he mentions, thanks for the assist while playing, guys. Sorry I didn't come help fight the queen, but I would have just died a lot and wasted stems for anyone trying to revive me. I was just doing some miscellaneous quests I've never done before. He mentioned that he does get a lot of requests from folks to group and he just never does. He enjoys playing the game solo. He doesn't mean to offend anyone by it, it's just his play style. Especially when he's aimlessly wandering around. He said though, I'll try to be better about accepting and grouping up with other folks. Thanks to everyone sticking with the game and providing the team with feedback. My team and I do everything we can to make sure they are seeing all of it and that we are providing info back to you as best as we can. See you in Appalachia, Pete. So yeah, pretty cool. He does seem like a down-to-earth guy. I thought this was pretty funny though that someone literally made a whole Reddit post over just nuking this guy's camp. But I mean, it is pretty funny if you think about it. This is literally the vice president of Bethesda Softworks. And he wasn't upset by it, as you can see by his response. I'm kind of curious if the players just 
repaired what they nuked. I mean, I don't really know what all happened afterwards, but I do know they did manage to get his camp by just pretty much being around him and distracting him from on where the nuke was exactly hitting. And it does suck being trolled like that. I have been trolled plenty of times since I made a Fallout 76 nuking series of experimenting where good locations are to nuke. So I feel for him kind of. I know deep down he was kind of annoyed unless they did just repair everything for him and he didn't have to go get that junk. Who knows exactly how it went. But yeah, anyways, I wanted to get into topic now over the Vault 94 raid. As some of you might have experienced it, it has been quite the experience, especially on console. Oh my gosh. The delays. No. Why so many delays? It's wasting so much time. Literally. Where do I even start with the problems? I feel like it is important to bring them up. I'm not really the type of person to complain, but, but speaking about this, I feel like may help. And the more reports that happen over these problems that I'm talking about, the faster they can actually smooth out this vault raid. One of them is how players can just go right through the door when it opens, when the mission starts. But for some players that are on the team, the door doesn't even open. So they're not even able to progress through the vault raid whatsoever. Another problem is that the enemies are just frozen sometimes, which is kind of odd. I mean, that part isn't that big of a problem. Not that many enemies to worry about. That's good. But eventually the server crashes, which sucks. Another problem is sometimes when loading into the vault raid, your screen just goes haywire and you can start seeing through walls and whatnot. As you can see here, for example, absolutely insane. Another problem is inserting mainframe cores and repairing pipes and waiting for it to drain. I actually almost completed it on expert on the console, which I will say the console is way more difficult to complete than the PC. Don't get me wrong, the PC is still difficult, but there are less frame rate problems and delays. There is just so many delays on the console, it's insane. Like I have grinded this for so many hours a day and most of the fails were from the actual technical difficulties inside the game, not from my squad and I. Wait, did I say sometimes? No, pretty much every single time. It is majorly delayed. That is a big, big problem. It's definitely the most common one, I will say. So this is probably one of them that they should be focusing on the most. Seeing what's happening with these specific delays. The draining and repairing the pipes. Also, another big problem is inserting those freaking mainframe cores on the puzzle area. Or just inserting things in general in that area is sometimes delayed. Also, backing out of the terminals. I know I got a lot to say here, but yeah, backing out of the terminals are also sometimes delayed. It's just a black screen and you're just chilling there and the timer is still counting down. It's a little unfair. I mean, look at this for Pete's sake. The timer was at three minutes and 47 seconds when we got it paused here halfway through the vault raid. And we still failed this mission on expert. That is some pretty decent time to have on the pause part. Almost four minutes to spare? The reason why we failed too was once again because of delays, like things just taking a little while to actually work. Or once again, for example, or once again, like I mentioned with the terminals, to back out of. But I will mention, you know, I don't expect all of these problems to be fixed unless just a lot of you just start reporting these problems that I'm talking about to Bethesda and they're able to look into this more. But hey, if you don't feel like doing that, you know, I totally understand. Another solution though that Bethesda could possibly do instead of fixing all of these problems is just giving a little bit of extra time from repairing the pipes. At the moment, they give a little bit of time when you repair them, but if they increase that a little bit more, I feel like players wouldn't be as aggravated about all of the problems that are occurring inside the vault raid. Once again, if you feel like reporting all the problems that I just said to Bethesda, feel free. The more people that actually report these problems, the better. That's one of the main reasons why I'm speaking about it in this video. Hopefully it gets more passed around the community and more players actually report these problems and then that'll chain react hopefully Bethesda to get these out of the game, hopefully faster. And lastly here, I wanted to go over real quick some of the unique items that you can get out of this. First off, in case you don't know, it seems like the unique power armor can only come from the expert mode. I have not seen any of my buddies actually get the power armor from completing it on standard. I could be wrong about that. But as you can see, here were some of the rewards from completing it on standard. 
We got a Strangler Heart armor piece, and this can be a complete set. We also got a Solar armor piece, and this can be a complete set. Also, we got a Thorn armor piece, and this can be a complete set. It seems like Thorn is mainly for defense. As you can see, here are the perks for this one, and it does require Vault Steel to make in case you don't know that is what vault steel is used for as well as a legendary module which you get that from the purveyor and the solar makes it so you heal nearby allies and as well as yourself so it seems like solar is meant for rejuvenating and thorn is meant for more defensive style and strangler heart i'm guessing is a mix of both but yeah that's about wrapping up this video everybody hopefully you found it enjoyable i'm out of here everyone thanks for taking the time watching and listening until next time peace